regular session of the Harwich Conservation Commission meeting for February 1st, 2023. This is a hybrid meeting. Um, participation is possible in person uh, by viewing on channel 18 and by and online through GoToMeeting for instructions to participate in the meeting through GoToMeeting, please see the agenda that is posted on the Conservation Commission or Conservation Department's webpage and on the town website. So um, first order of business, the first item on the agenda here is a request for determination of applicability for Zero Sequatam Road, map 101, parcel R4-3 for the construction of wooden stairs over existing concrete steps. Do we have someone here? Please, you can come to the table and state your name and tell us what you're doing. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Bud Burris, and the reason I'm applying for the permission to put these stairs is primarily safety. The cement block steps that maybe some of you have seen already are deteriorating and are becoming a liability or a safety hazard. Uh, my intention is to put them over top of those blocks so that the bank will not become a ditch for erosion down to the pond. I think you've got all the plans and, and that I had prepared and if anybody's got questions, I'd be glad to answer them. We do, thank you. Well, I think we'll start with Amy, who will give us her summary, um, and then we'll go on from there. As Mr. Burr said, they have an existing set of set and grade concrete block steps that are pretty narrow, very steep. Um, they're starting to not really be safe and serviceable. So what they would like to do is build a raised set of wooden stairs over them, raised set. Um, the stairs themselves would be three feet wide and no more than four feet if measured from the outside of the post and rails. Um, you have a scale drawing in your, in your drop box and in your packets. Um, this would not extend farther towards the pond than the existing stairs. Closer to the pond, actually at the base of the stairs, is a um, patio area. So normally we would be asking to remove the old set of stairs here it does not make sense in my opinion to do that. They are holding the very steep tall bank in place. Um, by removing them, plants are generally not very successful on steep north facing slopes such as this on Long Pond. So I would recommend that you let him leave in the old concrete set of stairs and just build the new set over them. So I would recommend approval with a negative two and three determination. That work's gonna take place in the resource, being an inland bank and the buffer zone, but will not have an adverse impact. Okay, thank you. Comments from Commissioner no comment. Wayne? No. Jim? No comment. No, I see this as an improvement. Mm -hmm. Stan? No, no comment. Sophia? I have no comments either. Any further discussion? Any comments from any of the public? Hearing none, do we have a motion? Sure, I'll move that we approve the determination of, app of applicability uh, for zero, and correct me if I'm wrong with the pronunciation, to Quantum Road, map 101, parcel R4-3, with a negative two and negative three determination. Second. Second in by Wayne. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, five to nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll have this ready in a couple of days, bud. We'll give you a call when it's ready. Okay, great. Okay, next on the agenda is um, a request for an amended order of conditions for 31 Shore Road, map two, 
parcel B1-7 SE32-2430 for bank stabilization, replacement of an existing deck and removal of existing stairs and reconstruction in a new location. Do we have an applicant or an advocate here? Mr. Chairman, uh, Bob Rogers with GAF Engineering on behalf of uh, Vincent Petroni this evening. Thank you. Go ahead. So, okay. Uh, so about two years ago, uh, we were issued an order of conditions to do uh, bottom of the slope stabilization uh, for the coastal dune. Uh, it was choir logs and choir rolls and the planting of beach grass. And so that uh, did a pretty good job for the section of the toe of the slope that it was the work was performed on. And but since that time, I'm sure the commission is aware there have been uh, some significant storms. Uh, there's been some further erosion uh, to the toe of the slope. Uh, Mr. Petroni would like to basically perform the same work that was approved two years ago from property line to property line. Um, there's also been some historical problems with his stairs at their present location going down to the beach. Um, so we're asking to remove the existing stairs and put new stairs, aluminum stairs, uh, further to the east, if you will, uh, to an area where the the beach um, is is at a higher elevation. And the third aspect of the project is there his existing um, deck, uh, which there's the, the deck that leads down to the beach, the, those stairs. He he wants to just um, it's it's a wood deck uh, that's a maintenance issue. And so he wants to replace the deck with a Trex deck. Um, and I see that you had the plans in front of you. Uh, if if it helps the commission at all, and you give me permission to share my screen, I can uh, bring the plans up and and just point out what I just uh, described. Okay. Can we do that? Or or you have the you know, um, Amy or one of your people can do it. Or we're going to allow you to do it, Bob. Oh, okay, great. Um, but we do have the plans in front of us. So, uh, okay. Uh oh, there we go. So, uh, there's two sheets. This is the plan view, and then we have details. And so, this this section was what was performed uh, under the order of conditions issued two years ago. So the, the order of conditions is still valid for another year. Um, and so we would like to, as I described, uh, extend that vegetated stabilization, the choir logs, the choir blankets, the planting of beach grass. It's, uh, it's all detailed on our second sheet here. So we want to continue that work remove those stairs, put new aluminum stairs. Um, it's not entirely clear, but the, so this, you see a contour that this would be an area that wouldn't normally be subject to wave action at high tide where, where this area is, you know, not necessarily at mean high, but any higher than normal tide uh, impacts the base of those stairs. So moving to this location um, would be a better protection for those stairs. This is the uh, existing wood deck that he just wants to rebuild it to the exact same dimensions using a Trex material. And um, and there's a uh, like a plexiglass uh, panel that that he would like to uh, put on that just more or less as a windbreak. Um, I, I have a detail of that if if anyone would like to see that. Um, I had met uh, several months ago with, uh, with Amy at the site, and at her uh, suggestion, we filed this as a request for an amended order of conditions, basically to simplify the process for the commission and for staff. 
and um, you know to prevent the need to you know potentially request a certificate of compliance and then file a new notice of intent that's you know a substantial amount of work uh, we can get this done um, you know this year and be in position to request a certificate of compliance prior to um, an amended order uh, expiring and so I would I would answer any questions that the commissioners might have I don't have any questions well, let's start oh, with the F, right? sorry <laughs> <laughs> Jumping the gun, the F. No um, so as mr. Rogers said the I recommended the amendment typically amendments are for the same amount of work or less than what was permitted but it made sense to push pull this together because they had an old existing permit the notification process is the same they still have to notify our buddies they still have to do plans they still have we still have to advertise for it so but instead of having two <coughs> open files for the same project dealing with the same type of work shorefront protection it just made sense to wrap it all up into one especially if they can um, if they get permitted and do the work within this year um, it's a kind of a unique site you have a coastal bank a revetted coastal bank um, over the northern two-thirds of the shoreline and then the bottom third of the shoreline transitions to coastal dune this is where they have done the core rolls in the past and what it is is two rolls thick buried and then one roll on the top covered with sand covered with matting and planted um, this was impacted by the December 23rd storm that we had that took upwards of 10 feet away from a lot of properties on Shore Road. Um, but this actually, I mean, even though it is, it's in rough shape, it actually held. Um, so what they're asking to do is extend and do those fiber rolls buried in one high above across the frontage of the coastal dune, of the, I'm oh, sorry, the revetment at the same time repair sections of the revetment if you've been out there um, it's an old rock wall it's starting to slump in places and it needs to be reset um, so reset the rocks put fiber rolls in front cover with sand um, plant with beach grass and I would recommend the, the fiber rolls need to be covered with sand otherwise they do start to degrade so I'm recommending an annual monitoring in the late spring say April or May of every year um, monitoring report about the integrity if sand is needed etc um, I think moving the stairs is a good idea to the north it gets you slightly above the high tide line whereas right now your bottom of your stairs are well within the tide line um, they look they are aluminum right now it looks like they could be the bottom section could be removable or pull up which I if they can do it soon that would be great I noticed a lot of debris caught underneath the, that bottom section of stairs which if we get another storm is just going to be damaging um, but going forward the new set of stairs should definitely have the bottom section re be removed in the winter season to prevent storm damage um, I see a lot of a lot of stairs that pretty much you, that's like a pulley system. You can just pull the bottom sets, um, portion up upon itself almost um, to get it out of the way of any wave action. So those conditions, I would recommend approval of the amendment. Okay, so no comment. two questions um, on the choir rolls if how long do you expect the repairs to last by replacing those I mean that's to me that's a never-ending battle against with mother nature I think this is um, this is uh, you know maybe the final best attempt to do this you know there there are as Amy mentioned it's so the the uh, slope is armored at the base on the north end, the, there are uh, stones as well on the south end, which uh, was discovered when they uh, put the duckbill anchors, the um, the helical anchors, 
um, in they so that so there there are boulders under the sand and under the vegetation um, on that south end as well. But um, I think you know if 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 this isn't if it doesn't work well enough and to be easily maintained and and I know you know he's um, been trying to acquire sand you know from the town source and possibly from a future dredging source. Um, but th this is what we want to try once more. And, um, you know, originally we were looking to armor and, and we understand in the bylaw that, that, that that's not the preferred alternative. Um, but, you know, if we just can't make it work with the quarry logs and the vegetation, that's really the only future recourse. The second question is with the stairs again, by moving it a few feet further, which isn't that much difference where they are. Again, that can change within the next storm or rising sea levels, where the benefit of moving the stairs isn't going to help. Um, and I guess my concern is, is when you say there's a problem with the stairs now, is that during year round or during the winter months or? What is your it's just after it's just after a severe storm is my understanding and um, so you know we're not opposed to uh, pulling the bottom section up but you know there's I mean it, there's there's only so much um, waterfront frontage uh, for this lot and and so the proposed location for the new aluminum stairs is is the best location um, we we didn't see a uh, a readily available product that would allow us just to lift a lower section. The the Aluma dock uh, that we looked at, basically it's a removable bottom section, um, which isn't something that would be easy for one person to do. But, you know, we're, we're willing to, uh, if it's a standard condition that the commission has been requiring that the, that the you know, the bottom section of steps to the beach be removed in the winter, then, then we would certainly agree to abide by that. So um, what I, but I think it's what you just what I heard you say your concern was during storms, which is primarily during the winter months. So I don't understand the need to move the stairs yes. then without if you if you can just take off that lower section in the winter. Uh, well, it's I think it's just a combination of the, the stairs being wood and being at that location where like um, you know, Amy mentioned uh, there's kind of some stones and rubble underneath them. Um, you know, uh, he he wants to keep his that that sitting deck right where it is, and so he's not um, trying to relocate that to to line up with the new stairs. We're just trying to put the stairs in the most protected part of the property that we can, and and use aluminum versus wood or tracks as something that's more environmentally resilient and environmentally friendly. But but the stairs are wood above the revetment right now and the lower section is aluminum. Yeah, the lower section is aluminum. Sure, well, so we, we would like to go with all aluminum. I think the question is, is that if it's already aluminum and if it can be the lower why, section why we... and it can be removed, why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't have pictures available that I can show you, but it's um, there's the it's the stringers underneath the stairs that got damaged that he had to add additional wood to and sister up those that section of the stairs, which okay. is something that, you know, it, it wouldn't be the case with the new ones. Okay. The best way I can put it, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're not doing we're doing this because, it, you know, it's it's too frequent a need of maintenance at the current location. Okay. I don't have any. John, okay. um, Alan is also, or Alan was on attorney, uh, not attorney, I'm sorry, Commissioner Hall was, uh, was online. I don't know oh, if he okay. still is. Alan, are you there? Do you have comments or questions? I don't. I saw him on before. It looks like I he's see. not on right now. Okay, Sophia. I don't have any questions. Okay, I have 
of a couple questions, mo mostly about uh, the, I would call it the west end of the beach, next to the uh, breakwater, jetty, or groin, or whatever you want to call it, where there's been significant erosion there, um, and the, the existing choir log uh, has been washed away. I guess that erosion is not indicated on this plan anywhere. It's not clear from the plan that there's a significant erosion uh, at that place. And so I'm just wondering, what is the plan? What is your plan during construction? What are you going to do with that? Because it doesn't look like you can just extend the choir log there up to the jetty. You'll need to put a fair amount of fill behind that to hold the whole thing in place and keep the, um, the elevation profile that's shown on the plan. So we're still under the current order of conditions, and so we would still be allowed, you know, with notice to the department to to perform work in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, what we did with the new plan is just include that section as part of the work, so that if for any reason um, during the next year that the order of conditions is valid, that we would need to add sand or or a section of quar log or or simply replant beach grass that again with due notice to the department that we would be able to do that and um it remains to be seen in the future if it if it doesn't work if it if it requires too much maintenance i'm anticipating that we would come back and ask to armor it and and but we understand that that's not a preferred uh solution so your answer is you w you are going to fill in that section to meet the profile shown on the plan. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, we you know there's no need to update the survey since we're you know requesting an amendment to the order and we're requesting to do to do this work. Okay. And my other question is about the plexiglass on the <clears throat> on the deck. Um, yeah, I can. I, if I share my screen again, I, ha I have a manufacturer's cut just to show you what it would what it would be like. It's well, it's, it's only forty good. inches high. It's a it's a windbreak. It's uh, so if if uh, if you would like. My question isn't so much what it's going to look like. Is it's about the safety. Okay. That is that's a very exposed location. You're putting up plexiglass, which. Um, <clears throat> can only take so much. And are, are you, I mean, is this, um, and I don't know if this is even our concern here, but it is a concern of mine that, that <clears throat> under adverse conditions, which you're going to see in that location, will the plexiglass be at risk of breaking, shattering, and causing property damage or injury? Well, everything certainly is at risk of that in this environment at this location. I, I don't know uh, the specific relevance of the building code for this, but um, so these are things that are, um, you know, designed to be in the coastal environment and subject to hurricane force action. Um, and so, you know, that's going to be between the applicant and the building department in terms of pulling the permit for this, but, you know, much like um, the windows of the house itself have to be hurricane resistant. That's my anticipation is that this would either have to be be that uh, type of strength or, or you know, again, removable in the winter. But it's uh, it's only 40 inches high. Um, you know, like I say, I can it, it, basically if you go online and you look these things up, they're they're all in waterfront locations uh, as a windbreak for you know, people seated at the deck. Um, but so I, I do believe it is a, um, you know, obviously it's a, it's a um, issue for, you know, potential uh, coastal storm damage if the panel was to fly off and, and actually it would, the thing it would get anything else, but I, I think it's a, a, a building department uh, issue primarily. Okay, thank you. Um, any more comments or questions? Are there, is there anyone here in the audience, the public here, who cares to comment or ask questions about this? 
Okay, hearing none, then we have a motion. Here, I'll move that we approve the amended order of conditions for 31 Shore Road, Map 2, Parcel B1-7, SE 32-2430. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all so much. Nothing. Thank, Thank you, you, Amy. You're welcome. So next on the agenda is um, 363 to 371, Route 28, Map 13, Parcel 88-1, Vista Pruning. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Pizzullo. I'm the secretary treasurer of the Harbor Watch Condominium Association. And Christian is here with me. Christian DeVoe is our president. <laughs> what we're filing here is this notice of intent to continue a uh, trimming project that we were basically started back in 2017 when a permit was granted to us for three years. Uh, what our intent is, is to trim the areas behind the two buildings from invasive species uh, and not remove them, not dig anything up, but just do all hand pruning. And we use a local contractor to, to, to do <coughs> that, Mason Tree Services. Uh, the permit was extended again in 2021. Uh, and then the reason why I'm reapplying now is uh, unfortunately elapsed because of the COVID situation, my inability to get up here and and reapply and whatever. Uh, we're basically asking to do the same thing that we've done in the past, uh, which is to just keep the vista pruning going. Uh, the area in the middle of the two buildings, I understand you were probably out there today to look at it, behind the dumpster area is a prohibited area and nothing will be touched in there. Okay, Amy. So the two view corridors, um, They've historically been pruning, but as Mr. Pizzullo said, they've let the permit lapse, and it, unfortunately, once it lapses, the state and us don't have a mechanism for reopening something that's lapsed, so they had to refile. They wish to do the same that they've done. Um, I will note when we were out there today that it appears, I, I mean, I would, if we allow this to go forward, I'd like to have another session with your tree company mm -hmm. because the methods for them of their pruning were really not the methods, the lateral pruning technique to encourage outward growth rather than upward, you know, pruning correctly does not appear to have been done. Okay. Um, the, the plants were not there. You're seeing a lot more upward growth and it, it, the pruning wasn't, wasn't done correctly. All right. Yeah, I'm sure he'd be glad to meet with you. Um, so, but in the future, I mean, we're having this conversation too. It is in your responsibility for, as a condo association to make sure things happen correctly as well. So I would definitely want representation from the condo association there as mm -hmm. well. Um, some of those shrubs, I mean, a lot of it is invasive, but a lot of what's growing up is actually trees. It's uh, cherry trees and oaks, um, which we had allowed to have been pruned. But again, even more important to have been correctively done. Whether you, you don't have to correctively prune the invasives Actually, in my, per my opinion, we'd be very interested if you wanted to do invasive management and removal in the future, um, but we could talk about that at another time. Mm -hmm. So with, with conditions, I could recommend approval going forward. Stan. Uh, so this would be a th three year. Um, Correct. Yeah. And during previous ones, did you just prune like once a year, Correct. every year? Yeah, the, 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 uh, the limitations were we had to do the pruning before the end of March or before March 1st, I believe, before the birds started to nest and started to, to reinvigorate. Well, my comment would be that every time of pruning, even if it's the same contractor because employees change or whatever, that to make sure that the pruning is done correctly, they would note, uh, meet with Amy first or mm -hmm. a representative of the conservation department to make sure that the pruning that's being done is correct. 
That's fine. The last few times he's done it, it's been the same person, but I understand but completely what you're saying. If it was what Amy was saying was it Yeah, if it's not being done correctly, we want to know about that. That's all I have. No remarks. No comment. No comment. Sophia. No comment. Yeah, I'd just like to follow up on Amy's comment that uh, more aggressive invasive management is desirable, at least, and I would request that <clears throat> when you're pruning invasives, I mean, going out there today is, it's not too bad. There are invasives coming in, but there's a bunch of bittersweet there with plenty of berries, which they're going to drop and reseed, and you're going to have a bigger problem shortly. And I suggest when pruning, you prune. Well, I don't know what you think that. about this, Amy, but it should be pruned in a way where those where the berries are not left on the ground there. Prune yeah, before the berries set or whatever. Cut back. And, and if they don't drop there, the birds will eat them and they'll be dropped everywhere. Yeah. Know. Okay. We'll definitely do that when we before we begin this, we have the meeting with the uh, with Mason Morgan. I uh, I want to make sure we're doing it correctly. Okay. Okay. Any further comments? Anyone else in the room care to comment? Hearing none. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the notice of intent for 363 through 371, Route 28, Map 13, Parcel A8-1, <coughs> with the condition that prior to any work being done, there is a meeting held with Amy. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unopposed? Just so you know, no, our process set. is two weeks from now, we'll issue the mm -hmm. permit. So we can call you or let you know when it's ready. You can pick it up or we can mail it to you. But you can't do any work until after that. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll call him just to get on his schedule. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is a notice of intent for 14 Mill Point Road, Map 1, parcel J1-94 for proposed pier, ramp, float, and dredging. The applicant has requested a continuance until March 1st. Yes. By Amy. They, so they were not successful in getting support of our local waterways committee at their January meeting. So... They plan on doing a redesign for some of the mitigation, so they've asked for continuance here. Um, I asked Don Monroe from Coastal Engineering, who is online, to be present at the meeting because at your last meeting or two, you've expressed, you know, we've continued this many, many times. At the, at what, you know, should we continue indefinitely, which would just require them to re-notify abutters, but continue them until they know they can be back in front of us. So I asked Don to be present tonight and and he is so. okay uh, I'll through the chair yes hi yeah um we do have a plan that we will present to the waterways that we think they'll be um, more apt to go along with we've gonna we're going to eliminate it looks like the oyster castles because john rendon expressed concern about navigation, but there wasn't any pushback related to the uh, types of oyster bags that one of your commission members uh, encouraged, us to look, encouraged us to look into. So we're going to go back with uh, that type of design uh, with the square footage that's needed to meet the mitigation and with an anchoring system that uh, won't cause navigational problems. And we finished that design and it will be submitted for the February 15th uh, waterways meeting. So that's why we asked for a continuance to March because we know one way or another, we'll be back in front of you in, in March on the 1st. Okay, well, so the question before us is whether we're just gonna accept that or, so you're, you're convinced that you will be ready on March 1st? Yes. Have any other comments from commissioners? Jim. 
Yeah, I mean, my feeling is that while I completely believe you that you expect to be ready on March 1st, this has been going on for an extremely long period of time, and we do continuances from meeting to meeting. I do not feel that it's that much of a burden to re-notify the abutters you know, when you are definitely ready to come in front of us that it would be a significant problem to continue this indefinitely until you're 100% sure and you can contact Amy and go through the process and we will continue the hearing. Through the chair? Yes, sir. Uh, totally disagree. We don't have to go do renotification. I'm giving you my guarantee right now. 100% will be in front of you on March 1st. The plan's already done. I do want to meet with John and Heinz before the February 15th meeting, but we're already scheduled to be on that meeting. So for you to put us through a renotification where we're going to Waterways on the 15th doesn't seem like it's the right procedure. Uh, I know we've continued a number of times, but that's not just because of uh, our uh, uh, inability to prepare uh, documents. It's more because of the amount of issues that have been raised each time we've come in front of the commission to, to address those issues in a way that uh, the commission feels comfortable with the presentation. So we're confident that we'll be there on March 1st because we're already ready to go uh, to waterways on the 15th and, and the plan's completed. So I don't see that we really need to do a renotification when I'm giving you that guarantee now. Do we have any other comments from commissioners? I guess I'll just say, I'm not sure I agree with you, Jim. I'm, I'm not sure there's any point making a point out of this. Um, if they don't show up on March 1st, then we can then we can just ask them to please re-notify and come back. Um, that's my opinion, but if someone needs to make a motion, I'm not going to. I'll move that we continue the hearing until uh, March 1st. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Four in favor, one opposed. Through the chair, thank you. Uh, and I, I'm on the hook, so I'll be there March 1st. <laughs> <laughs> My reputation has to precede me. <laughs> thank okay, you. John. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda is a notice of intent for 4, 8, 11, 12, 16, 17, and 20 Chloe's Path and Zero Forest Street, Street Map 31, parcels D4-3, D4-4, D4-5, D4-6, D4-7, D4-8, D4-9, D4-10, and D3 for reestablishment of the Turtle Protection Plan set forth in NHESP 09-20086. Quite the introduction. A lot of numbers. A lot of numbers. And letters. Uh, good evening. My name is uh, John O'Reilly. I'm project engineer. Um, to my left is uh, Peter Donovan. Uh, behind me, um, who is the applicant. Uh, behind me is um, a attorney Singer. Uh, we're all here to answer any questions the commission may have. Joining us by Zoom is Mark Cooperman, who is the um, the specialist for the endangered species who um, prepared the plan that you have in front of you. We're here tonight to to ask to have the turtle protection plan that was approved and in place in 2015-2016, which has <laughs> lapsed, uh, to be reestablished. Um, so this work is taking place uh, on uh, Mr. Doan's property on Forest Street. Um, it's a continuation of the work that had been started. Um, but we're here for the, to, to reactivate the, the permit. Uh, so with that, I'd, I'd like uh, Mr. Cooperman to um, 
step forward and, and review the plan and, and between the four of us, we'll be happy to answer any questions the commission has. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cooperman. Good evening, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and everybody, members. Thank you, John. So, uh, yes, as um, John mentioned, we are here to reestablish the, the previously approved 2016 um, turtle nesting habitat improvement plan um, in the par parcel off of Forest Street and adjacent to Mr. Doan's property. The let me give you a quick overview of um, what that originally called for, and that was essentially to look at a couple of zones um, moving away from the wetland within the scrub shrub habitat to enhance and provide some additional nesting areas for for turtles. In this case, in particular, state listed um, species of special concern, eastern box turtle, and. It was to capitalize on some of the already existing um, semi-open patches within there um, to manage the vegetation such that it would be a lot more favorable for nesting areas directly adjacent to the wetland on the slope um, facing towards, um, towards the south there, which is a favorable slope. There are two zones. If you, um, I believe you all have a copy of the figure that um, Mr. O'Reilly has provided and and the way the restoration plan was laid out, there were two zones, both what we called the zero to 50 from the wetland edge, and then also the 50 to 100. Um, the zero to 50 would have a minimal amount um, of, of work done in there and only capitalize on a few areas that we find that might be a little more open because it, it tends to be thicker. The 50 to 100 uh, zone has a lot more opportunities. I've walked it recently with Mr. Donovan um, and I walked it several weeks ago, and there are a number of opportunities in there for vegetation management um, and also scarification of, of the ground as needed to provide that, that favorable um, loose soil nesting areas that turtles prefer. Um, more recently, I, I think in response uh, to Amy's email and some questions she had, I tried to better identify the, um, the limits of work for this within that zero to 50 and 50 to 100. I think that should be a, a figure you all have with a big orange box <clears throat> surrounding the focal area of, of the habitat improvement. The work um, after walking the site recently with, with Peter, with Mr. Donovan, um, and talking about the contractors doing the work, it's going to be fairly light-handed, um, some groundwork, handwork, hand saws, maybe a, um, a mini micro excavator to do some scarification as needed or to drag brush out. Um, and again, we looked at it, finding those areas that are favorable for that work that require the least amount of vegetation management. The work um, we anticipate would take no more than a week in total. And our window per um, NHESP would be, um, you know, to do the work before April. Um, at this point, obviously, when turtles are not active. So the idea would be to proceed with this work, um, you know, this winter as soon as possible and, and fulfill that that required work um, to bring um, bring compliance back to the site. Okay, thank you. I actually, before we proceed, um, would just like to comment that the, the diagrams and pictures and plans have been unclear to me anyway personally and I and we just got a revised plan today or yesterday which is I think what you were just referring to um, and I think it would be useful for all concerned if you could show that plan and one of the issues with this plan in my view is it's zoomed in too far it doesn't show the context of the rest of the plan it takes a little while to study the plan and figure out where you're referring to. And this is just an update, this, this thing of what was in your previous, uh, previous filing. But I, I would just like to have you share that on your screen, explain to us exactly where those things are, please, because I don't, I, I don't know that it's completely clear. Sure. All. Let me walk you through. through. Let me. I do have hard copies. Right. Oh, okay. You, you brought them. Okay. Um, I think we we all have copies, right, Amy? You should. Yeah. 
If you wouldn't mind, can you? I don't. I don't use this go-to meeting very often. Can you give me some guidance as to where to share the screen? Um, our IT person, um, channel IT person, just invited you to share your screen. Okay. Uh, I'm not. I'm not looking at it in front of me, so I can't help you. There should be a share icon at the bottom. Of there should be a share icon at the bottom. Screen. Oh, there we go. Okay, open. That's oh, for the need to. Okay, I have to open system preferences. Uh oh. Privacy. Hmm. Oh, the apps below. Control your computer. There should be an icon. Try. Where, Matt? Below your video feed. Yeah, mic, mic, camera. There's one that says screen. Mic. I'll try that. Try that. Yeah, and then it asked me to open system preferences, which I do, but it won't let me change it. So there, is it, does it say mic, camera, or does it say share somewhere? Oh no, you know what happened? Uh, yeah, I see it, but it's hidden. When you guys let me open, open me up here. Um, can I reduce the view again? Uh, yeah, um, it's covered. It's covered now, for some reason. I can see part of it. Make sure that make sure the window is maximized on your side. If you can do uh, the window within window on the top top right, make sure it's the full screen. Hmm. Enough camera. Weird. Okay. And I have it electronically, but I didn't provide it to Matt. Um, I didn't think I needed to. The part which. Yeah, I could go email it to him. I can. I can email oh. it. I can email it. Once, once you invited, once you invited me. Um, it opened up the full screen and it can't seem to. Hang on. Um, Wait a minute. John me, is going to email I can it. just forward your email, right? Um, so, Matt, we need your email, though. I don't, I don't know what the access is for that. I have to. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I just got, I can't get out of the screen for some reason. See his screen now, just his desktop. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay, can you see the figure now? No, the share that that next row of icons is it's kind of buried. It's above. I see the mic, camera, screen, and leave. But I need to get back to the original screen when we started. It looks like to see the share one. It's not an active icon. Okay. Well, um, I don't want to spin our wheels for too long here. Uh, doing IT, um, so perhaps... Can you guys I'm... see that when I pull it up? What's that? No. Is it, it, can you guys see the figure when I turn it on here? I don't, I don't care if I can see me, but... Make... Is that visible? No. No, okay. 
John. John, do you have do you have the hard copies you can Could you, pass along to everyone? You have one of Hold the on, full, full scale plan plans. Just this. Yes. Yep. And that picture, perhaps. Sure. I suggest you that. get up and just illustrate for us that as best you can where that falls. Okay. Thank you. I, I have a copy. I, a lot of, most of this has to have because of the large version. Just a large version. Which email? The presentation with a capital T, laptop 2021 at outlook.com. What's that again? Presentation. yourself uh, this is the larger version of one of the plans that was in the packet um, this in row is at the top always path um, mr. Doan's property is here and Forest Street is here um, the area that is on the PDF that I just I'm sorry the, the sheet that I just had <coughs> it is this area here we have a wetland along the, a, the large bog along the south. And um, the area that's in the picture is you can see the 50 foot buffer and the 100 foot buffer, not only from the large bog, but also the isolated bog that sits just north and east, if you will, of um, the proposed path. Um, this was, this, in this corner was where the old pump house was. Uh, that was taken down as part of the restoration and maybe took itself down. Um, but again, to give a whole perspective, this in Road, Chloe's Path, Mr. Doan's property, and this is the area that Mark Cooperman has outlined in his, uh, this is with the area that for our Hurdle Neck restoration. So just yep. to follow through with this, okay. can you also point to the features in the other map and explain what they are because again I think Ms. Cooperman was talking about that but without sure. referring to I, I, can, well, I can yes and I, I can walk you through that without having to see it on the screen as long as you all as long as you all can see it in front of yourselves and the other figure well Mark let me walk them through and I can point to your picture and then you can add in yeah um, yeah yeah so I can tell you what's here happening is, in. here is the exhibit this is forest this is Mr. Doan's property. This is the large bog that I was referring to, and this is the isolated bog that I was referring to. Chloe's path is against me. Um, so the resource, the wetland resource that we're talking about is the edge of the large bog and the edge of the isolated bog. Um, and you can see in this photograph that the work area is between the edge of wetland and the 50, as well as the 50 and the 100. Those have been labeled. And there are some um, areas that Mr. Doan, uh, as part of the original approval, there's some gardening, um, garden areas down here that, that were built into the plan. And those are identified by uh, two, uh, two rectangles um, that are shown on the attachment here. So, so just to clarify, those two rectangles, I mean, they look like they're in the middle of trees and shrubs. So I don't, I don't quite get that. 
That is one of them, it, it's Eastern End is right up against uh, Forest Street. Yep. And, and there are trees or shrubs there. So how is that a garden? Is that really where? Well, it's, it's, it's an area for native, sh native I'm sorry, I see. native shrubbery in here. And then the 10 by 50 garden? Yes, I believe Mr. Doan, uh, Mr. Doan has a garden down in here. Mark, can you comment on that long rectangle? Yes, yes, absolutely. So the the um, the 100 by 35 is an enhanced native shrub planting area that uh, when we worked this out, Mr. Doan had um, sought to, to have. Now that has um, several cedars and or pitch pine in there. And the idea was to um, plant that with an understory native shrub um, amongst the open space in there. The 10 by the 10 by 50 garden was in fact an area allocated for a kitchen garden for Mr. Dome, um, all previously approved through any GSP. So that one, the 10 by 50, looks like it probably uh, involves the removal of a couple of trees. Okay. Thank you. I hope that's clarified things for other people. But, and I'm sorry to interrupt the flow here, Amy, but I think uh, if you can comment at this point, if you guys, if you are done with your presentation. Yeah. Um, so, so just to recap, so for the audience, we're really talking about the creation of fox turtle habitat on a portion of the property that abuts Forest Street near wetlands. We will talk after this. There will be a discussion topic of review um, of the asphalt for the road. So we're just focusing on the turtle piece for right now. As part of the 2016 approval from the Conservation Commission to create the road for Chloe's Path subdivision, uh, they were required by Natural Heritage and the Endangered Species Program, which is part of the Mass Department of Environmental Protection, um, as well as the Conservation Commission to implement the Eastern Box Turtle Protection Plan. Um, the road was completed and associated clearing and grading, and this plan was not implemented. As this old permit is now expired, in order to do any additional work um, in the wetland or buffer zone, I instructed them to reapply with this new notice of intent to do the proposed work. Um, as you will see from the materials provided to you, the plan has not changed in 2016 except for some clarification of the precisely more the, the area that this would take place, which is what I requested the other day. Um, let's see. So they also had to file with the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program because this is a new notice of intent that's within priority habitat. As of the time of this meeting, we have not gotten a response from Heritage. That's not unusual. Um, they have up to 60 days to opine. We hope that it's quicker, but it's usually no shorter than 30 and usually pushing towards the 60. Um, so without that letter from them, the Conservation Commission should not vote on the project. Um, I did make a phone call the other day to the Natural Heritage Endangered Species Program. I have not heard back from them. So I don't have too many questions. I'll just quickly go through again what you're proposing to do, which is zone one, which is in the zero to 50 foot buffer. Um, you're proposing to remove up to 25% of the vegetative cover which is to achieve a more open habitat, which is what the Eastern box turtles prefer, is a little bit more of an open habitat than what you have. Um, and in the 50 to 100, you're proposing to remove um, sapling trees of less than four inches in diameter, again, to create more of an open understory there, correct? Yes. That's correct. Yes, um, accurate, thank you. What it will be done with the cut debris it will be removed. Okay. And just for the, just for the record, the um, existing pump house that the superstructure has been removed, pretty much fell in and the debris removed, mm -hmm. but the foundation is still there. Um, and this is to disturb less of the area. It's really right up against the wetland. So at this time, I don't have a recommendation for you because we have not had anything from Heritage. Okay, thank you. 
I suspect there are some people in the room who would like to talk, but before we do that, um, I'll give the commissioners a chance to uh, comment or ask questions. Wayne. No, I don't have anything. Jim. No, the only question I would have would be for Amy. Do you have any sense as to when we may get something from Heritage? Within 60 days. Within 60 <laughs> days of today. Okay. Sorry, I'm not trying to be funny, but that's, no, the, no, that's I, the reality I, of it. I completely understand. I was just wondering if you had. I mean, I don't remember I don't the date that you filed with them, but they. Um, um, we filed uh, right around the same time January 17th. Yeah. January 17th. Okay, so um, like around March 17th, like the. Well, it they, they, I, I'm, I know it could be sooner. Yeah, I think Mark Cooperman might be able to add some light on to um, Natural Heritage's yeah. involvement going forward. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, if I may, so I'd just like to add two, two parts. One is, um, Amy is absolutely correct. They sometimes are working on their 60-day clock. However, I am going to reach out um, directly to our reviewer um, and remind her that we are going through this. We, we were asked to fulfill this uh, by Heritage mm -hmm. before Mr. O'Reilly had to resubmit the application. So um, I was approached a number of times asking where we're at, are we fulfilling the compliance for the mitigation? So I am 99.9% .9 confident that you'll of course receive a favorable letter from Heritage in order for us to proceed with this. But I will also at the same time try and um, push it along so you can get something a little sooner than later, Amy, on that. Thank you. Mark. I have no questions. Thank you. No, thank you. Okay. Sophia? I have nothing to add. Um, I see Mr. Dunn looks like he uh, is ready to speak. So, uh, Robert Doan on Forest Street and um, owner of the land um, adjacent to this. Uh, the, I want to address the 10 by 5, uh, 50 garden as well as the 100 by 35 native shrub planting. The concept, as my understanding, was that the trees um, would be removed from those areas and I was to replant with beach plums. Mm -hmm. This whole area was once a lot of beach plums in that area and because of the overgrowth of the area and of course the um, bittersweet, killed pretty much all the beach plum bushes in this area. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to reestablish them in that 100 by 35 foot area and, and additionally in that 10 by 50 area. But that does remove, um, require moving some of the trees because beach plums need pretty much full sun. And I think the idea was the beach plums with the grass underneath um, does give a, a better uh, habitat for the uh, turtles. Uh, I'd also just note this, I believe this map is from prior to 2016 mm -hmm. and that this area is probably much more dense now. None of these open areas probably are visible by satellite now. So. Yeah, I looked on Google Earth and it appears to be from 2016. Yeah. So. Yeah. And <coughs> I have a question which is what, what's the status of bittersweet there now? Uh, it's still there. It's still, still there. there. So what, as it gets cleaned out, I will manage so bittersweet, bittersweet doesn't grow, at least in my areas. It will be cut back or removed. Mr. Cooperman, did you have a comment? Yes, no, no, that sounds correct. Thank you, Mr. Dillon, um, for the refresher. Uh, this goes way back. But yes, that's right. The idea was to plant a uh, beach plum garden. Which, uh, which is correct. So there um, is probably more uh, undergrowth in there, bittersweet and or sapling growth at this point. And part of the plan is removal of invasives prior to that. Is that correct? I, well, they were going to clean it up. I, that was my understanding so that it would be ready to, to plant um, beach plums. Okay. It, it was not so much. It was not so much an invasive uh, management plan as it was defi versus defining those areas as outlined by Mr. Doan, the 10 by 10 by 50 and um, 100 by 35. It's just identifying those areas for for the gardens for him, so which would in fact be favorable 
turtle habitat. So who is responsible for removing invasives? And is that, that yeah. will need to be a commission of we, we mm. Anything going forward, so, but, yes, Sophia. I was just gonna ask if anybody knows this, the species and quantity of trees that are gonna be removed for that. I don't. I, I don't have that information. We, we could probably pull that, you know, have that information for, for next time, if, if the commission would like. I think that would be desirable, yes. A planting plan, which includes what's going to be removed. Okay, any other questions? From the Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, um, my name is Peter Gorey. I live at 226 Sisson Road, um, butter to the project, and I was noticed. As to the notice intent, um, Mr. Chairman, member of this, uh, members of the commission and Mr. Andrzejewski, I suppose this hearing could have been held tomorrow because it feels like a lot like Groundhog Day. There is a saying that some here no doubt have heard, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. This, my friends and neighbors, fits that definition quite aptly. I purchased my home with my wife here in Harvard Center in May of 2021. Since that time, I've participated in over two dozen meetings and other sessions associated with this project site, including here my fifth time before this body. I note for the record that this is not just because of Ms. Uh, Yusowski's urging. This is after the enforcement letter hearing, excuse me, of earlier this year in January, and letters from the administrator twice in May of 2022 and in October of 22. And I must speak now to add that in a letter of October 5th from the Deputy Director of Mass Wildlife, HFH was notified that they were not in compliance, that the work had begun in 2016, that they must provide demonstration of compliance with the following conditions of the 2016 DFW determination no later than November 15th, 2022. It is February. I will add that to the record subsequently via email. I've sent it to this to Amy's office multiple times and I've sent it to this board. As with many other sessions, this body has spent scores of minutes discussing docks, driveways, decks for longer than this matter has been discussed ever in my time in Harwich or in the record over the last five to six years since the expiration of the existing orders of conditions that this body approved. Your predecessors I recognize, but this body approved. Since this location is both in the wetlands location, abutting town of Harwich own land and that of the Harwich Conservation Trust, the Doan family, and critically important habitat for which this commission is responsible for protecting, I urge you to act this evening in the enforcement matter that came before you last month, that was noticed legally in October and went ignored. I have sent no, more, no fewer than 25 emails. I've spent count, countless hours on the phone with the town and the commission staff, staff members in the NHESP personally, direct conversations with staff at the state, that some of which prompted the letter from the deputy director of the agency in October. I'm asking this evening on behalf of my neighbors for action, no more time respectfully should be given to this owner to put together a plan, and I respect their professionalism, and I respect that this was a uh, curveball created by technology, but the plans don't even show a legend. It calls out a Sisson Road site, but it doesn't show that we're talking about Forest Street. How would individual citizens know what we're talking about if the plans are not prepared professionally, adequately, completely? You must not approve this notice of intent tonight. I say that despite the fact that losing another winter overing season is also an anathema and frustrating to me. But we're talking about seven years. There are, there's language in these deed restrictions and the covenants that state that you need two years for the disturbed areas to repopulate before any review could be conducted. The owner deserves again, respectfully, no more time or chances to pull something together. The as built plan, which we'll discuss in a moment, and I am certain I will comment on, should have been completed months, if not years ago. 
and I, my understanding from Amy and from her comments earlier, this is at least the fourth, if not the fifth revision since the deadline passed. This body foot put forth a series of orders of conditions on this property nearly seven years ago. They number 13 pages. This is not just about the turtle management plan. The owner volunteered, voluntarily, excuse me, entered into those protective covenants with the Commonwealth, and yes, the town, the state, and the state, and those covenants are recorded with the Barnstable County Registrar of Deeds. Let me just read, if you would indulge me, two excerpts from those documents. One, the deed restriction, Habitat management activities, including forestry, may be permissible with prior written approval from the National Heritage, Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program of the division, the division and its successors and assigns, as signs, as Amy pointed out earlier. You should not, and in fact, in my opinion, you cannot act this evening until NHEP rules. And again, I would ask you to ask the proponent if they responded to the October 5th le letter from the deputy director or the November 15th deadline. Lastly, I will go back to the other deed restriction where in the town is party, excuse me, where monumental signage would have been ins installed years ago, specifically noting the DEP wildlife location and the permit number, none of which was done. I leave you with that for now, and we'll be interested to hear the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brody. Do we have any other members of the public who have comments? Do we have members of the commission who want to respond to any of the comments that have been made? So um, it doesn't appear that we do. I will acknowledge your concerns and uh, suggest that we are making progress here, although it is certainly delinquent progress, but we have the owner of the property in the room, which is a first. Um, and we are trying to be as constructive as we can here. So, um, and furthermore, Amy said at the front that we're not going to um, suggest that we can't, as you said, um, vote on this tonight. Thank We've you. We've got to continue this hearing. Okay. Could, it, could I ask something for the record? Could you ask? May I ask something f for the record? Go ahead. I, I just want to, <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to make sure that my file is papered from that, my, my neighbors. Um, is this, in fact, a continuation of the enforcement hearing of January? No, this is a new notice of intent. Okay. Can the proponent define, as they described earlier, that the work was started? When, in fact, did it cease? Why did it cease? Were the 2016 orders of conditions fulfilled? I believe the answer is rhetorical. Was the application of this filed in a complete and ambiguous fashion prior to the deadline? Has the town heard from NHP? That's been asked and answered. And will at long last the commission ask, as the administrator did the, at the last hearing that I was particip that I participated in, for council to clearly and definitively respond to how the deed restrictions for the protective covenants might be amended? That was asked last hearing, and I expect an answer. Thank you. Do we have any any comments from? Amy or Amy? I do not have any. Um, sure, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Amy Quessel, Town Council. Um, the protective covenants at this time have nothing to do with what the board has in front of them. Okay, thank you. Uh, through the chair, just a question I have in my notes. Um, you're just, 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 I want to make sure that we get you what you want as far as the area. You're looking for size and character of tree and ground you know, what's being taken out quantities wise uh, you had mentioned planting plan which I yes um, it was one question was what trees are being removed and okay. can you enumerate those 
And generally, when we're considering modifications like this, uh, we get a planting plan so we can see exactly what's being proposed. And I have to uh, <clears throat> uh, just repeat what Mr. Gorey said about confusing plans, which is why I asked that question at the beginning. I don't feel like we've been presented with a plan that is easily accessible by us, the commission, and we, you know, we, every time we meet, we're looking at these plans, and they're not always straightforward, but these plans seem to be slapdash at best, and uh, I think that's pretty inexcusable under the circumstances. We should be able to look at your plans and clearly understand what's in the plans without having to ask a lot of questions about where is this and what does this mean. It should be all there in the plan. And like I say, you're looking at people who are accustomed to looking at plans like that. And I, I don't know about my fellow commissioners. They're, you know, they may have an easier time, but I, it took me a while. I had to spend some time with this, and uh, I'm sure citizens who want to understand what's being proposed here, um, you know, may have a harder time. So I would appreciate when you come back um, that you have more clearly articulated plans that we can look at and understand clearly. And it took a couple go-rounds with Amy to get even what you presented today. So that's what I have to say. Um, I don't... May, may, may I add clarification to that, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. So um, point taken, however, let, let, let me go back a little bit. So typically these these habitat restoration plans are done in this fashion frequently through through MISA. We do it all the time, whether it's a an eight and a half by eleven or a D scale sheet. The the idea is if you look at the narrative, it's it's intimately associated with the narrative um, in the quote unquote the experimental protocol associated with it. That describes what happens because one of the concerns with regard to being very specific is if you read, I think it's the last two paragraphs, it tells you that members from um, the consultants, us, will go out in the fields based on those parameters, percentages, et cetera, identify areas for the contractor that are to be enhanced for the habitat. Habitat management is a very, uh, very much a fluid dynamic process it's not a there's no replanting let me be clear about that so with regard to the nesting habitat there, there's not really much replanting um if any the idea is to actually remove plants the replanting would only apply to mr doan's um, garden boxes okay um that being said the the reason the map so to speak the plan is zoomed into that area is because it simply associated the project plans at the time so it was understood this was that area adjacent off Forest Street, adjacent to Mr. Zones, Mr. Doan's parcel, excuse me, by the pump house, formerly, formerly there. Um, it was never intended, and, and I feel as if people are trying to use it as a standalone, it was never intended. It was part of a bigger package. It was never intended to be a standalone site plan, okay? So if you look at the figure, what more appropriately is referred to as the figure, in conjunction with the, the narrative, which would need to be read in detail, it lays out what's going to happen. Now, more recently, yes, I understood that um, maybe folks here, not necessarily at Natural Heritage, didn't understand exactly where that was gonna take place in that zero to 50 and 50 to 100. So that's why I put that orange box around there to say, let's limit it to this, okay? Um, but the idea is that it's not designed to be so specific as a planting plan. Um, the description was trees less than four inch caliper DBH in, in the 50 to 100, et cetera, things like that. Those are the characteristics that we frequently and often use for these habitat restoration um, techniques and quote unquote plans moving forward. So the plan was not, the figure was never designed to be a standalone plan for, for the site itself. Um, the, the proof is in the pudding and in, in the details and the narrative that associ that's associated with that. I, will, I don't know if that helps or not. Um, I, there's not a lot more. I think you've received a request for more cl clear presentation materials. Understood. 
Uh, Mr. Gorey, you're asking for more time. I'll give you one more minute here. Thank you. Uh, I just want to note for the record that the plan that was submitted, the narrative, is dated 2016, Eastern Box Turtle Nesting Habitat Improvement and Management Plan, Sisson Road, April 6, 2016. Thank you. If there is no further discussion, I think the next order of business here is to talk about, uh, we have to, we have to continue. continue. Yeah. Yeah, continuing yeah. The, uh, the matter here and talk about dates. Um, when, I mean, when would you, aside from the, the letter that we're expecting, when would you be prepared to come back? Anytime? Or do you have... Actually, we, we, would, we, we would like to be invited back for your next meeting if you have, if you have room for us. And the only reason I'm asking is because of we'd like to try to get this work done this winter, as Mark said, um, and April is our our end t end window. <coughs> Just suggesting. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. um, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Um, I would have some concern about right now determining we can go to the next meeting because we need before we can take any action at all we need to hear from Heritage. Now, if it takes 60 days from when you filed, that would be March 17th. Our second meeting in March, and correct me if I'm wrong, Amy, would be March 14th. So that means that potentially we would not be able to act on this till the beginning of April. I, through the chair, I agree with that timeline. What, I, what I'm asking is to be, if, if available, if there is room to be put on February 15th agenda. If we have not heard back from Natural Heritage, we would simply ask for another continuance. And I would be opposed to that. Amy, do you have I comments? would recommend um, for be you being on the 15th of February. Um, it gives you a week to revise your plans. We do have a policy of a week prior for submittal. Okay. Um, that, I mean, that is up to the commission to consider things that are submitted after that. At least by then, we can discuss plans, hopefully. Understood that heritage may take longer, but it may take shorter. And if at all possible, to still come to some agreement and to get this done this season, I don't see the harm in putting it on the next agenda. Any any comments from commissioners about this? I I agree with Amy. I think all of us would like to see this go forward immediately, if not sooner. So I don't see a reason for not putting it on the next agenda. And if we need to continue again, um, we need to continue again. You're saying different dates. Which which next agenda? Next February fifteenth. February the fifteenth. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yep. I'm going to move that we continue uh, this matter to our next meeting, February 15th, 2023. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Or in favor, one opposed. Okay, moving on. So the next item on the agenda is for discussion and possible vote to review the as built road plan for Chloe's path. So who? John. Go ahead. You, uh, just give me one minute. So we've given you two plans. Um, one was the as-built, partial as-built road plan, and the other one was a, a, a much larger site existing condition plan. Um, 
I made a um, drafting error when I originally submitted the plans to Amy, and I take full responsibility for that. And I tried to identify the change in plan. Uh, it was a drafting mistake where we had pulled in an, an old version of the restriction line and didn't realize it until we had started staking the work on Monday for Amy's inspection and, and on site. So we, <coughs> we fixed the plan, and again, I just apologize for the confusion, and certainly I don't like giving you plans the week of the meeting. Um, having said that, um, we did go out and locate the existing road. We shot grades along the existing road. We had uh, located and verified the drainage that was installed. My firm was involved with the road construction inspection with regards to grades, um, road-based material, and pavement install. Um, where the road is construct currently constructed to is there is a binder course of asphalt, um, which ends just before the cul-de-sac. Um, I have placed the cul-de-sac in a dashed formation, but the pavement ends just before the cul-de-sac. Um, the utilities are installed. The electrical, I believe the electrical is installed. No, I'm sorry, the electrical is not installed, but the water line is installed, and all the drainage is installed. So what, on the lower half of this asphalt plan, you'll see a bold red line, and that is the existing center line of the, of the constructed way. And if you look further down on the, on the sheet of paper, you'll see some red numbers. And those red numbers are the existing center line grades of the constructed road. And you can compare them to the proposed elevations um, which were presented when the, when the road was approved. Um, <clears throat> as part of the road construction, um, the applicant sought and obtained uh, permission to clear what was what is lots four and five. Uh, which is down by the cul-de-sac. Um, the, as you come into the road, the shoulders are completed. It was loamed and seeded at, at some period of time. The site, as you get towards the end of the paved area, is, um, or just before the end of the paved area, the shoulders are, are, are pretty well established and stabilized with grass cover. Um, when you get towards the end of the road, you have exposed soil, um, and it's not the vegetation is not as, as well covered. Um, so we did stake out the lines for you. We stake out several lines for you to look at. One was the MESA line, um, the restriction line. One was the 100 foot buffer zone for the road uh, from the road plan. One was the limit of work that was established as the road for the road construction established through this uh, this body. And, and I, well, that was, that, I think those are the, what I stake the, the real intention. Um, so the other piece of document I gave you is um, is a site. surface to the end. Um, I have the edge of clearing that's been that had been established. And just to go back to the previous notice of intent, this is this is Mr. Jones property down here and this is where we were just talking. Um, but again you can see <coughs> the green line is the Mesa restriction restriction line. Again just for clarity I did note you know the the line that was drawn in error so you know what the difference was. Um, we do have an edge of clearing there so you can see where the clearing has been done in relationship to the, the various lines. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, the commission may have. Amy, do you have comments? Yes. So, um, first of all, just for the commission and the public, um, 
only a portion of the project was within the Conservation Commission's jurisdiction of the 100 foot buffer zone to the wetlands. So actually, the majority of the paved surface of the road, with the exception of a small area, so literally the 100 foot buffer zone nicks the pavement in one area. The majority of that and the drainage is actually outside of our jurisdiction. However, the commission, when we approved the plan, we got a complete set of the plan showing the proposed drainage, grades, everything like that. So it just made sense to ask for the same thing at, at this time, that the plan include everything. But what we're most concerned about is activity that happened in the 100 foot buffer zone to the wetland or within um, you know, the limit of disturbance. So um, first, my recommendation is as far, we are not professional engineers, myself or anybody on this board. So potentially the town um, might be interested in having a third party look at this, make sure everything was, was copacetic. So we have a couple of members of the selectmen here tonight. So um, I would recommend to the town to have a third party look at this. Um, I won't comment on slopes and drainage and um, anything like that. All I will comment on is the work that was done in our jurisdiction. So for conservation, they had a limit of work. As you drive down the road on the left-hand side, down, down the hill a little bit, there is a depression that is a wetland, an overgrown bog. There was a limit of work that had been established and the limit of work was exceeded within the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone there. You can see there's edge of clearing and then the, old, the limit of work line, there was an area that was exceeded here. Then as you go up towards where the cul-de-sac to be completed is, there's a 100 foot buffer zone line there as well um, to the wetland down, down the hill. And this didn't, there wasn't a 100 foot buffer zone plan shown on the plan in 2016 that we reviewed because we didn't, think that anything would be disturbed past the edge of the cul-de-sac. So it was, there was clearing in addition to, there was clearing within the 100 foot buffer zone on the east end as well without permission from the Conservation Commission. Um, also for note, it, and it's, it's the limit of disturbance for MESA line, it, that line was also um, slightly encroached upon on that eastern end. Um, this is just for discussion and possible vote tonight for the commission. Um, the commission can decide how they want to move forward with the encroachment that happened within your jurisdiction without um, authorization. Typically, the commission requires, um, could either fine and or require replanting of areas that were cleared without authorization. Um, and that's what I would recommend here. It's not so much, it's more important to restore habitat and things that weren't supposed to have been done, but the commission can also choose to levy fines if they, if they wish to. Okay. Do we have comments from commissioners? Well, if they're going to have to replant some areas, we should have a planting plan. Find out what they're going to do. And so that's your that's is your suggestion. That's that my that's suggestion. Like yes, we, the way we should proceed, Jim. Um, I agree with Amy, and I agree with Wayne that what is important is replanting in areas that were cleared that should not have been cleared and that we should approve that, but to approve that, we would need a replanting plan. I would agree also just the uh, clarity on the restoration. I have no additional comments. I Thank agree, you. it should be restored. Okay, um, I guess I have a question, which is, Uh, what I don't understand about this plan, I mean, I was trying to understand the sequence of events, and again, I looked on Google Earth and saw that 
I think it was within a month or two after these plans were initially approved in 2015 or 16, was it? 16. In the following January, uh, this whole this whole thing was cleared, including this big chunk at the at the end around the cul-de-sac, and nothing has been done except making that that road. And I'm just I would like an explanation for why all that all the all those trees were cut, all that land was cleared, and just left there like that for the last seven years. I, I'd love to hear. Mr. Donovan's reason for doing that. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> so initially we were uh, going forward with a seven lot subdivision um, and, you know, working towards putting the road in and utilities and all that. And then around, uh, I'd say, late 2017, early 18, we decided to change course on the project. So that's why we stopped uh, with any other work. So. That's the reason it stopped. Okay. Well, I don't. <clears throat> I don't have any further comments. I think I agree with the, with a conclusion, here that we need a planting plan and we need these areas replanted. Um, you know, if, if it we're in our power, I would be asking for replanting for a lot of this area that's been fallow, but it's outside the hundred, so we can't. We can't enforce that. Um, so before we move on, it appears to me Mr. Gorey has a comment. Thank you. Just for the record, Peter Gorey, 226 Sisson Road. Um, thank you, and I hear what you're saying regarding the planting plan, but my understanding is that your charge is still habitat, and this area is still in priority habitat zone, or at least a habitat zone as recognized by the DEP. Um, so the part that was cleared that should have also been replanted, at least in the interim, I think um, Mr. O'Reilly mentioned that it was loamed and seeded. I've worked on a lot of lawns, and I haven't seen any loam or seed that sandy ever. Um, so I think your, if your charge is habitat in addition to the wetlands, can I understand why that wouldn't be covered, as well as I'm reading from your orders of condition from 2016, which may have lapsed and may not be relevant whatsoever, but there should be a clear... Um, maintenance plan for stormwater runoff or not? Well, you understand that our jurisdiction does not extend beyond 100 feet. Ms. Yusowski um, said at the last hearing that habitat is in your jurisdiction. I meant for it when it was within the 100 foot buffer. If it's outside the 100 foot buffer, it can still be mapped habitat, but it is not under the Conservation Commission's jurisdiction. Despite the fact that the town is named in the de deed restrictions and the covenants? I would have to defer to Lieutenant Council. Council. No, that does not extend your jurisdiction. Thank you. And who's who within the town's jurisdiction would it be? If the town is named in the deed restriction? It would be the select board. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Sandy McClarty, East Harwich. Um, Amy mentioned that you could also put fines uh, attached to this behavior. And as a, um, someone who's been involved uh, in the last three years, I would recommend that um, you consider uh, penalizing uh, this behavior so it doesn't happen again. Clara McLarty, Pleasant Bay Road, East Harwich. I just wanted to say something similar, but that not in a spirit of being vindictive, but because the situation in Harwich is that when people are incentivized to make money off of land, there is very small and, and not enough um, enforcement or even regulation to prevent the abuse of the land. And so if there is any enforcement in your power, I believe it's already too little, and that's not under your control, but whatever is in your power, we ought to enforce it as much as we can, knowing even that that is inadequate. And we, we can tell by the history of this parcel that there isn't going to be any intrinsic motivation to care about bittersweet turtles, promises, habitat, 
So even though it was a small area that was cleared that's within your jurisdiction, I think that we need to use whatever enforcement we can to send a message because Harwich is being gobbled up. Thank you. Before, before we take your comment, I would just like to ask Attorney Quessel to speak to what the limits of our ability are to impose fines in this case. So if there's a violation of the wetland um, protection bylaw or your regulations, um, the commission is able to you know, issue a fine. Um, the fine, again, would be um, under 40 section 21D, so it would be a non-criminal disposition ticket. Um, the applicant has the, op has the ability to um, appeal that to district court. Um, and the commission would then have to go to district court and fight, you know, fight it. Um, when issuing a non-criminal disposition ticket, there has to be a narrative that has to be drafted with it. So the conservation agent has to go, you know, to the property, um, find that there is a violation, um, somehow figure out who removed the vegetation without a permit. Um, it, it's it's not. It's not as easy as saying we're going to fine you, you know, three hundred dollars. It's it's a little bit more involved. Um, the other thing is that um, getting the restoration is is more important um, for the commission. The commission cannot take that three hundred dollars, which goes into the general fund, and use that to go out and fix the fix the condition. So, requiring restoration or mitigation is, um, in my opinion. Much more, um, much much more beneficial to the conservation commission and your charge. And if the conservation commission were to decide that, aside from that judgment, we just wanted to extract a fine, what would be the limit? Three hundred dollars. But you have to go. The, it's a, under the twenty one D statute. You go. It's first offense, second offense, third offense. It's so it's it's a sliding scale. But the limit, the absolute limit, is three hundred dollars. Per day, offense. yeah, per day per offense. But in this, I, I just want to just chase this notion down because there's clearly people here who are interested in this and I would rather just finish the topic off now. If we were to decide to go that way and we wanted to do daily fines, which would be, how would that apply in this specific case? Well, again, daily fines, uh, it, they would apply because it's a, a violation. Um, each day is a separate violation. However, that would be, um, Amy would have to go out to the site every single day. She has to draft a narrative every single for every single ticket. Um, and I can tell you in my experience, the district court would probably not uh, look very favorable on those fines. Um, usually you're in front of a magistrate and the magistrate will either throw out the fines, cut the fines, um, it, they're very hard to uphold these non-criminal disposition fines. Can I ask a follow-up question yes. just because it's come up? Um, there was, there's been question about whether fines can be levied retroactively, such as we know that the work took pla no. place because you have before. to before. No, I'm just just asking. Yep. Because no, because you have to file up. a narrative. With right. your every every ticket has yeah. to have a narrative, so the ticket has to say, "I went to the site on X day and I saw right. that vegetation had been removed." So it would be going forward. Mm -hmm. That's the only place. Thank you. Yes, sir. <coughs> Under twenty one D. Yeah. Uh, Dan Warner, two two eight Sisson Road. I would just oh, second yes. the recommendation that fines be implemented. Um, this seems to be a concerning pattern of behavior of blatant disregard of the commission's decisions. Uh, whether it just be do not clear this area, we told you not to clear, but I think it also pertains back to the last topic of the turtle conservation land back in 2016 that they, you said, they said they'd implement and they did not implement. So I personally am just concerned that there seems to be minimal to no regard of your decisions or the uh, environment in question around the uh, development by the um, developer. Thank you. Other comments? Judith Underwood, um, I'm, I'm here as uh, an individual tonight, but in full disclosure, I'm a, the Affordable Housing Trust, and I'm also one of your water and wastewater commissioners. Um, I'm in a butter, I live across the street from 
the entrance into Chloe's path. I don't know if this is in your jurisdiction, but I'm going to ask the question. Um, in our community letters to the Board of Selectmen, I, I put in this question to them, and nobody has since uh, answered it. Um, so when the approval came through in 2016, um, and when they started doing the fill on the hill, on the gulch that was there, um, I called up town hall because it looked like they were dumping sand and it looked like they were not doing it the way John had very nicely explained to us in the meeting. Um, and I called his office, as did one of the other neighbors, and his office did call back to say that he was no longer the engineer for the project. And I repeatedly called the town to get somebody to come down and just to see if they were doing it the way that he had explained. And unfortunately, nobody from the town showed up. <coughs> Excuse me. So my concern is that that hill is not built correctly. And um, that one day it could slide into those wetlands there and hopefully you know no kid is riding their bike on that i don't know if that's in your jurisdiction but i just wanted to remind everyone that that piece of engineering was not i don't know what the correct term is there was like if you put a bathroom in your house they have to come and in, in inspect it there was no official inspection of that gulch being filled in in that hill being made and that was a pretty deep place and that was where all the water came I know they put in new runoffs but it makes me very nervous very nervous for uh, so thank you just for clarity maybe you can point out to us exactly where mm -hmm. she's talking about mm -hmm. I think so um, Ms. Underwood you're talking about as you're driving down Chloe's path coming from Sisson on the left hand side in the low spot, correct? Yes, and where the road is because that was part of the, um, the gulch. <coughs> okay, so if it's the low spot pretty much in the road and to the left of that towards the wetland. Okay, I was there. What so just so what I did respond, I went out to the site. I had the, the limit of work had blown out in, in an area that was within our jurisdiction, within the Conservation Commission's jurisdiction. That sand had to be pulled out because it had eroded into it and the limit of work reestablished. I'm not sure if that is the exact area you're talking about, but there was a response, just so you know. Thank you, Amy. No, and I remember that. My concern is, and, and again, maybe it's not your jurisdiction, but it should be somebody in the town. It's so that area going all the way up to Sisson Road, that's where the fill was. Okay. It was pretty deep. And, and yes, there was the part that came out, and yep. you did check that. Yeah. Thank the, you. So the as built. So now we have a plan that I asked Mr. O'Reilly to show elevations, to show, and that's why I am encouraging the town to have a third party review this just to be safe. Um, Mr. O'Reilly is a very reputable, good surveyor, um, but still, it is a very uh, noted, notable project here in town, so I would recommend that we just have somebody check. But we have as built grades. If, if I could, through the chair, I, I think what Yes. What he's talking about is, um, if you look at the profile, mm -hmm. uh, the fir r when you come off Zissin Road, the existing grade dropped right off. Once you got yes. off the shoulder, it dropped way down. Mm -hmm. And so there was considerable amount of fill in this front area. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I it's not our jurisdiction. So it, and, and where, where this fill is, is up here. Yeah. So it's outside jurisdiction. Um, I am going to have to be, I'm going to, <clears throat> I'll have to go back and look at our records because we were the engineer of record for this road. Mm -hmm. I don't know who in my office told you we weren't. Um, but we did all the layout. We inspected the drainage. 
He inspected the clearing. He inspected the fill as it was being put in. Um, Mr. Speakman, who did the, the actual installation. Mr. Briggs Engineering did the soil compaction. Did the soil compaction. So we do have engineering for mm -hmm. the compaction. Um, Thank you, Peter. Um, so you know we were involved in the construction, which is which is required, which is a requirement of the planning board. That's really you know the planning board approved the plan uh, plan and profile. Mm -hmm. They they require certain steps of a road to be inspected. Um, so at the end, when the as built is completed, letter of certification from the design engineer is supplied to the planning board, typically, which addresses any deviation from the plan as well as any compliance with the plan. Mr. Chairman, if I may, does the planning board have a surety from you for the road and the installation and the utilities? Uh, a bond? Bond? Yep. No bond, no. Covenant? There mm. has to be something. There's a covenant, I guess, yeah, but no bond. Okay. There is no a bond. covenant, yeah. So concern has been expressed about that road. So, um, so that is under the planning board's jurisdiction. And the planning board does have the opportunity to do an inspection. Okay. Um, my only question is that the um, uh, that the hundred foot buffer kisses the edge of the road in an area where it sounds to me like there was fill installed, and if there's a risk of collapse, which I have no idea whether that's a real risk or not, but that would in fact impact conservation jurisdiction. So my question is. I mean, are, you're signing off on an as-built, uh, and I'm taking that sign off as your uh, your assurance that the, the road is properly constructed, and and you don't expect any risk in the future of uh, collapse of that. I typically, what a certification does, yes, the okay. road is built to a certain standard. Now, the um, the hundred-foot buffer zone that comes in, the closest it gets to the road is about eight feet to the pavement. Mm -hmm. um, right. And this is the area that had the problem with the limit of work line. Mm -hmm. And that is actually the low point of the road. So um, the amount of fill at the low point was pretty minimal at, in this location. It was much more significant up in here at the beginning, and that's why we had those compaction tests done. Um, I, I am not concerned at all of this road shifting, moving, eroding away. Um, I mean, I, I just don't see it, but okay. my letter of my certification will do that. I think well, Mr. Gordon has 27 seconds. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, I want to test because we have Attorney Quessel here. If we're talking about the as built that was not provided, and we're talking about the uh, turtle habitat management plan that's not done, both included in the 2016 orders of condition, are the rest of the orders of conditions expired and moot, irrelevant, not valid, not enforceable? The 13 pages and the 30 odd special in general plus otherwise included in the orders of conditions from 2016, please. The order of conditions has expired, so mm -hmm. they cannot do any of the work that they asked to do in that 2016 order of conditions. So Correct. to do any of that work, a new NOI would be required for the entirety of any work proposed. Within conservation Thank jurisdiction. Thank you. Oh. Go ahead. I, uh, Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yes. So what we're talking about is the replanting because there was enforcement issued, mm -hmm. can we do the replanting plan under an enforcement? Yes, yes. Because you're replanting what was, yes. Right. So not Nothing, a new notice of intent yeah, you can't for that. I just wanted to clarify mm -hmm. that. So this evening is an extension of the enforcement action or is it a notice of intent? And what is the 15th? Two separate Please. things. Thank you. So the turtle than what we had before which was the turtle creation of the turtle habit habitat management area that was a notice of intent that was a brand new hearing okay. this is discussion and possible vote this is part where they were required by a certain date to provide an as-built plan for the road 
according to an enforcement. So this is a continuation of the enforcement here. Thank you. Of the enforcement meeting discussion. Okay. Um, I'm going to say we've exhausted all the comments <laughs> in the audience. Uh, and um, so the next step here is to uh, perhaps vote on a, on a, on a next step. All right. Does anyone have any comments, care to make a motion? Um, care, does anyone here care to address the comments from the public asking for a fine? No one else does, I will, um, which is I appreciate their feelings. Their feelings I've felt before, probably do today. Um, my experience, however, tells me that I think we're much better off um, going forward here than issuing a few $300 fines. I think it's, it's, um, it's not worth our time. Honestly, I don't think it's worth our time. What we should be focusing on is moving forward, um, um, <clears throat> um, doing what we can now to get cooperation from the owner of the land to do what needs to be done and as soon as possible, rather than getting bogged down in trying to enforce uh, uh, this with fines. You know, if we can't make progress now, then maybe we can reconsider that. I would prefer to move ahead with um, asking for a planting fund. I don't know. Do we need to make a motion here? Yes. I would recommend, because this is part of the whole enforcement matter, that you make a motion that gives them a deadline mm -hmm. for the submittal of a replanting plan. And my recommendation would be mo one month. Yes, sir. I'd like to disagree with your comments regarding the fines, especially if you would go to even beyond the one day, is based on the attorney's comments, the cost of trying to do that for having the conservation agent or one of the designees to do the work required to implement that fine would probably be more than the cost of the fine itself. Don't worry about no, that no. time. Do what you feel is necessary no, I'm, for I'm, progress. I'm not worried about your time. I'm talking about <laughs> my feelings on the subject. Okay. As a, from my profession, which I won't expand on, cost of doing business. Anybody else care to venture an opinion? I would just say that I think that um, it sounds like there have been a lot of red flags in the past with this project and that, you know, I, I don't know about fines, but there's still a lot of work to be done the right way and what is in our jurisdiction is clearly very important to everyone and the turtles and um, I think that really needs to be done mindfully and, and properly and, you know, nobody's off the hook ever really in those areas. So um, I would just like to see um, it done really well this time. Can we have a motion? I'll try, Jeff. Uh, I move that we require that a replanting plan for areas that were cleared without authorization be presented uh, to this committee for discussion at our meeting on March 1st, 2023. Second that motion. Any further discussion? Comments about the motion. Rather than a planting plan, perhaps it could be termed restoration plan because there may be other details involved mm -hmm. with what they have to do other than just the first one. Okay. If you're proposing that as an amendment, I would accept that amendment to my motion. And you accept that as a second? I do. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? We would need that plan because it's not a hearing, but we would need that a week prior.
So uh, next item on our agenda is a show cause hearing. Sorry. All right. Everybody needed to take a breath. Uh, show cause hearing for 38 Red Pine Drive for unauthorized tree removal. We have respondents. Uh, yeah, I'm the uh, one one of the owners of the house and I identify I, yourself am I by myself yes please identify yourself oh, by name I'm sorry can you hear me I'm Penny Wassum my legal name is Penelope um, and um, I I did it I mean I, I took down trees illegally um, so I'm not you know I, I, and I can explain to you that I did not understand the law but that's no excuse um, we purchased the house in um, 1986. It was built in 1979. And there were little saplings coming up. And we fed them and we kept them going, And especially because I wanted to keep the moss between the pond and a uh, little bit of lawn that we had going because I understood that environmentally that was the way Mother Nature cleans runoff and um, that it was good for the environment. So we nurtured trees everywhere and um, then I started having um, carpenter ants in the house more than once. I had raccoons, I had squirrels, and I have moss and my trees, my roof which uh, lost 35 years off its warranty and now needs replacing. And basically the exterminators, the roofers, the contractors and the critic, critic control people told me that I could be as much of a tree hugger as I wanted to be but that I had to expect these problems if I was going to keep this behavior up. So um, when Jeremy came out and came up with a plan to remove the branches that were facing towards the house, I kind of just said, I just broke down. I said, what's, what's stopping us from taking them down? Just take them down. And uh, there were five trees involved in this. And he said, I could take them down. And I said, good. And we did. So I don't um, condone. We have been only used environmentally safe. We use EcoGeek for the exterminator. I keep them on a retainer it's because it has become quite a problem. And, but we don't use any, any lawn service or anything that is not environmentally sound because we do feel we have to protect the pond that we live on. Um, do you have any questions for me? Um, well, shall we take? Jer this is Jeremy, Jeremy from Save a Tree, who took the trees down for me. Okay. Do you have something to say? So, um, as I had said, I, as she had said, I had advocated pruning the trees. Um, I had never considered removing the trees at the time, and you know, to my negligence, when she altered my suggestions, I, I uh, agreed to it. Um, I regretfully do so, and uh, I am a very conservation-minded person. I went to UMass Amherst for wildlife and fisheries conservation, and I had been working with the, the residents of 38 Red Pine Drive for the past nine years, and we're both very on board with maintaining everything we can to make sure that the pond is healthy. Uh, I didn't feel uh, ecologically very concerned with taking these trees down because it's a stand of black tupelo and we took one red maple and four black tupelo down to a very large red maple. Behind the red maple is a very healthy stand of tupelo still between that red maple and the pond but those trees were continuously growing over the house and I do regret and apologize for not seeking the uh, approval of conservation beforehand. It was partially um, provoked by my necessity to, my feeling of necessity to keep my tree working and uh, having a cancellation later on in that week and being able to offer them to do the work pretty immediately. I see, okay, thank you. Amy, do you have? So we, we were notified of the work taking place and went out there and 
met with uh, Jeremy's crew. Jeremy was not at not the site. Um, the work was, um, the trees were a little bit farther away from the house, but I could see that how they could potentially have been causing some shading and some, some issues there. Um, it was not, you know, had these trees been at approximately the 100 foot buffer zone line and there was a question, I could understand a little bit better, but Save a Tree has worked with us in the past and these trees were only about 50 feet away from the pond. The pond was right there. Um, even pruning, we would technically require an administrative review application for pruning of the trees. So even if you were just pruning, you should have contacted us, let alone taking the trees out, regardless if they were in a stand or not. In a way, um, I mean, both parties are liable. It's obviously the homeowner's responsibility to know the rules and regulations and follow them. But um, in this case, I think um, Save a Tree is, is fairly liable for this, having known the regulations and still done the work clearly really close to the pond. Um, my recommendation is, um, sorry, I'm just gonna get this moved. I would recommend a after the fact administrative permit for the owner at double the fee, which is $100. And replanting, more importantly, two to three native trees and 10 native shrubs within the jurisdictional areas, not within, with under my guidance, not in an area that's gonna be a hazard to your roof. Um, I do recommend fines for save a tree. Um, you've done work near wetlands for a very long time and um, I hate doing this, but we need to ha make sure companies are abiding by the rules, just like homeowners are. The commission can decide the amount, but I do recommend a fine for saving tree. Could you just repeat the replanting recommendation? Two to three native trees, depending on area and like space availability. We don't wanna just plant trees where they're not gonna do good or where they're gonna be a hazard. Two to three native trees and 10 native shrubs. And an after the fact administrative application at double the fine. At, normally it's $50, it would be 100. And I will mention, because we I did notice when I was out there and I looked through your permitting record, you do routinely prune your understory there to keep your view of the pond, which is something that we, we do approve, but you never got a permit for it. You do need, and I would recommend, and I'd be happy to work with you about it, on it, a permit to continually allow maintenance to maintain your view, because you, you go right up to the pond. Yeah, so. Is that, does that include the bushes that we have on the upper pond that we trim out? We need a permit. Anything within 100 feet of the wetland. Okay. I'm happy to meet out there with you and go oh, through and it a little bit. have been trimming them before I got there. Yeah. Yeah. No, they didn't get permits. Yeah. It, <laughs> as we notice these things, we bring we bring it up, um, and that's how we we get compliance. So just want to make sure things get pruned in the proper way and not just talked. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Amy and Wayne. Any comments? <sighs> I'm a little torn on this, but. Mr. Ross, I, uh, if you just pled ignorance, I probably would have been in your court, but keeping your crew working is no excuse for no doing sense. that. No. So I'm gonna recommend we go ahead with the fines. Okay. Um, I think I agree with, with Wayne on that. I'm troubled about this, I really am. Um, if I may ask you a question. Well, that fine is issued, if it's issued, will that be an impact to you personally or the company? Uh, both, directly. Um, uh, more so to the company, but it's definitely going to weigh heavily over my uh, performance. Um, would it endanger your position for the company? Potentially. Thank you. I would just ask, are there any prior violations? No, I, I've worked with Jeremy on, an, on a few projects here in Highland. Okay. Yeah, 
I get the reluctance of um, my colleagues here, some of them, uh, but we have such trouble with people of mine who use wills. And I, I, think, I think we have to make a point here. Sorry. Can I make a suggestion? Maybe we cut yes, the fines in half so they're not quite so burdensome for Mr. Ross? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I, I would be fine with that. Okay. Well, that. Yes, sir. From your perspective, would that make a difference? I'm not sure. That's what my. Well, would you like to make a motion, Wayne? <coughs> John, yeah. Before we make any motion. Okay. May I suggest that we do two separate motions, one with regard to the potential for fine, and the other with regard to the requirement for the replanting. Yeah. I think we should do that. So that's All right, I'll make a motion for 38 Red Pine Drive, and that we fine $150, uh, or 750 for the save a tree, and $150 for the owner of the property, and for that, take a motion and also another motion for yeah. let's you want to do, do, do that first do, okay go ahead a second okay, and that. I'll second that one. all right discussion i'm not sure what we just did <laughs> we cut the fines in half is what we did well, there's a motion on oh, the floor. for the fine for the fine that's it okay and and originally okay you're asking for discussion is there discussion okay yes. so the Fifty. The half for the owner was not part of Amy's recommendation, so oh. I'm making a comment. On My that. motion was to cut the fines plural, cut so that means fine. all of them. Can I ask a point of clarification? You may. So, um, the hundred fifty for the owner would that be? They still have to file for an after the fact permit. So would that be in addition to yep. the after the fact admin review? At a hundred dollars, I think or that would be a, that would be part of a separate motion. Okay. Um, However you so want to handle it. I think the confusion here, Amy, is when you made your recommendation, you didn't you didn't actually mention a fine for Correct. the owner, although I did that, not. I did in my recommendation, but yes, upon right. discussion well, today, I had yes, said that's where the I meant to is. say in lieu of a fine, have or do an after the fact admin review. I double the fee, which is $100. But you can, you, you, your motion is whatever you want it to be. So. You're still fine with your motion? Yes. Let's vote on Wayne's motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So that's four in favor, one opposed. Okay. Okay. So. Next would be a motion about the re replanting. Okay. I'll make a motion that we require the landowner to file an after the fact after the fact administrative application and to replant the area of concern with two to three native trees and ten native shrubs. I'll second that motion. So, a comment. Shall we include in that motion a requirement to, a requirement for the approval of the cons conservation administrator of the specific planting plan? Um, I would accept that if that's a proposed amendment to my motion. And I would too. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? None opposed. I think we're done here. We'll be in touch. No. No, no. Thank you, sir. I'll be in touch with you tomorrow or Friday, okay? Thank you. Thank you. I'll bring it with me. I'll, or I'll email it to you. Okay. I'll call you okay. in the next Thank day or two, okay?
Chair, can we skip over the order quickly and go to um, the request for certificate of compliance for Mr. Cooney? We can. For Geraldine. Okay. So Mr. Cooney is in the audience. Um, his representative, Engineer Stephanie Sequin, is online. Um, they requested a certificate of compliance for their permit at 4 Geraldine Avenue, which was for the addition in the pool. They were um, also had, were required to do um, a replanting area. According to the as built, they also installed an additional approximately 125 square feet of hardscape in the 50 to 100 foot buffer. Had they not also planted well over 250 square feet more of additional native planting, um, this would have been an issue to me, but you did additional native plantings, the ink berry kind of on the northern property line, I think. Um, and I think had they requested the 125 square feet of additional hardscape with that planting, when they saw it, you would have approved it. I don't see the need to labor you know go through that um, and make them you know refile anything for that more hardscape um, the real question was is that the plantings it is in the order of conditions that the plantings are supposed to be in for a minimum of two years at a 90 percent survival rate um, mr. Cooney Stephanie had said the plants went in in June of this past year correct um, so we went through a drought this past summer, and I know you have temporary irrigation, but the drought and then winter is always tough on plants. I would recommend if, sometimes we do grant certs of compliance a little sooner than the two years, but I recommend that you at least wait until like May or June of this year to see what leaps out, and that way if he has to do um, then he can do so this spring. If you have anything you want to add, please feel free. So you're recommending no action. Then. I'm recommending no action. Um, I, I, am, I am saying that I think the rest of your project, though it was a little different, I think it's in substantial compliance and that once spring, May, June comes along and we can assess the plants and make sure that you haven't lost more than a few, that I would be inclined to recommend a certificate of compliance at that time. I guess my question is, so why did this come up tonight? If it's under the two years? They requested it. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Chris Cooney. Hi. I'll be perfectly honest with you. We didn't know there was a two-year thing until we kind of got into this. So I was, I'm kind of the type of person who likes to close out a permit, mm -hmm. you know, two, three years goes by and then all of a sudden I want to do something and you're like, oh, you've got two open permits. And I'm like, ah, I forgot. So uh, there's no immediate rush. There's no immediate rush, there's none. Um, I just like to know what we're required to, if anything, in June or even September yep. of 2023. So my recommendation is, is that you contact me in May or June of this year. Have me come out. <laughs> Excuse me, I don't know where that came from. Um, <laughs> have, <Long night. laughs> have me out to your property. I'll take a look at approximately what percentage, if any, you've lost. Direct. Let's do it in May. That way we're in a good planting season. If you have to do any replanting, I will instruct you what you have to replant. And then at that time, we can reassess, see if I can make a recommendation for you to close out after you, if you have to replant, or if we have to wait another few months. Great. Have me out in May. All right. Stephanie, you're going to remember that? Yeah, uh, I will mark it on my calendar. <laughs> I'm going to put a note here. Go out in May. Contact Mr. Cooney. So no action tonight. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cooney. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry you had to wait. No Hopefully worries. it was entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> it was like something's been going on for a while. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. okay. Um, 
Um, is order of conditions for 61 Shore Road mm -hmm. to parcel B1-1 SE32-2517 dash for raising and replacing a dwelling with appurtenances and beach access. Uh, you have the draft. Let me know if you have any corrections. Go ahead, nothing. I have nothing. You ready? Or you want to take a few minutes? Not that I can anyway, so no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'll make a motion that we, um, that we basically close the public hearing and authorize the issuance of an order of conditions for 61 Shore Road, map to parcel B1-1, SE32-2517. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. So, um, let's see. Uh, next we have discussion and possible vote for um, ongoing, update on ongoing land management tasks, hearing over study. Is there anything to be discussed? Nope, sorry. Okay. Our best. But then we have two sets of minutes on the agenda. I believe there was only one on Dropbox, September 7. Yep. Anybody have comments? You wanna take a oh. few minutes? I have no comments. No. No. You all set? Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of our meeting of September 7th, 2022. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. Okay. Looks like that's the end of our agen agenda. A any anything further to discuss before we? Please do your ethics training if you have not. Oh, that's right, too. <laughs> um, yeah. There's there's some bugs with the getting into the soft into the program. So oh, my favorite thing. Let us know if you have problems. <laughs> you stand longer to try to get in than it did to uh, take the test. Uh, yeah, on speed dial. <laughs> yeah. Wait, it, took, it took me an hour to get into oh, it. Oh, you, but, yeah, that's right. It was you, not, not yeah, Stan. Yeah, once, once I got into it, it, it was, was fine. fine. I you? was lagging. I had no problem getting in. Yeah. Don't they recommend using Google Chrome? Were you using Google Chrome? I tried that oh, and it didn't during work. the hour. Great. <laughs> and that didn't really work. took you. Oh, boy. Um, the Mass Association of Conservation Commissions has their annual meeting, but it's all virtual this year. Unfortunately, we exhausted our funding for public for your education when we sent many of you to the 1K conference. Oh. So if you want to go, I'm sorry, we cannot pay for you. But there are some, a lot of really good classes um, that they're going to be doing at the end, online at the end of February and early March. And I can, when they have an agenda, I'm happy to send it out to you. But um, we normally can pay, but we're not. It was not in that line item this year. Um, well, that's too bad. Um, we're going to have a work day on Tuesday out in the field this coming week, weather permitting, Stan Thompson's field. If anybody wants to come help. What do you do? Cutting and pile burning. What time? What time are you? We'll probably start at 9. And Which, the 39 side or? 39 side. What are you cutting? Pine trees or? Oaks, um, sapling, sapling, regrowth sapling and oak. Uh, regrowth sapling, pine and oak. What Just are you trying cutting? to maintain the field openness for the health of the sh other shrub layers and ground covers. What are you cutting and wood? Chain saws. What? Chain saws. Brush Chain cutter. Saws. Oh, okay. Brush right. cutters, loppers, whatever you can use. Lathes and chainsaws. Yeah, that's the questionable thing. We, the staff people, can use the equipment. The 
volunteers. I don't know if that's <laughs> the talent. Bring your own power tools. Yeah. Yeah, I can't let you use town equipment anyway. Um, I have chainsaws. Yeah. Brush cutter. If brush I cutter is most effective. Yes. Chainsaw, it, your back is going to kill you after a little oh bit yeah. because it's all the sapling stuff. It'll be a fun day. It's always fun. That's all we've got for now. Hmm. Okay, I, I just remind people that February 24th, Friday at 2 o'clock, we're yes. yeah, that's doing right. the uh, land management plan for Bell's Neck. Um, and we might be in this room. I've asked. We'll see. Oh, good. Um, and we also specified that anybody's edits to that document should uh, be sent to Amy by the 17th, right? Yep, week prior. So please, you know, it's bedtime reading, so, you know. We'll remind you at the next meeting, which is the 15th here. Right, okay, so then people will have two days to, uh, <coughs> right. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 A